Hey friends, for over 30 years, banks, governments, manufacturers, and other industries have relied on Microsoft integration technology, such as host integration server, to access and work with data on their mid-range and mainframe systems. Now you can add Azure Logic Apps to your list of options for solving your mission-critical integration needs. Harold Campos is here to show me how it works today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. Today I'm chatting with Harold Campos, who's going to talk to me about cloud native capabilities, integrating with mainframe and mid-ranges. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Scott? All good? I am. Uh, you're, you're scratching a neuron in my brain that I haven't thought about in many, many years. I did a lot of mainframe work at both Nike and a bunch of banks. I did a ton of integration work throughout the 90s and during the, the Y2K. Uh, wow. stuff working in banks. So this is very exciting that we're still keeping these mainframes chugging and bringing them to the cloud. Yes, it is. It is, Scott. And mainframes are still around and we have to work with them as part of uh, the mission critical scenario for our customers. Yeah, I understand that a huge amount of people uh, are putting their data on mainframes. They're still out there. Mainframes exist. They're not old and legacy. They are fundamental to so many businesses. So when the world moved to the cloud, mainframes came for the ride. You, you are correct. So uh, let me let me show you a little bit about the evolution of uh, the mainframes over over the last uh, seventy years. Right? So mainframes they started around nineteen fifty, and uh, they've been evolving. The hardware and the networking has been evolving um, from what you used to have, you know, back in the day to what uh, what you have today. Um, but uh, basically, at its core, uh, mainframes remain the same. So on the inside, the applications, they are left and mostly untouched, which uh, poses the challenges because there is a lot of data and a lot of mission critical systems being hosted in, in, in those uh, devices, uh, despite their modernization. It is estimated that, that there are trillions of dollars that were invested back in the day in SNA and SNA applications, which was the, the, the predecessor of TCP IP. Right, as applications were linked to the way how protocols work, as you know, so then um, um, they are still around, and and they represent uh, they represent a, um, a, how can I say this one of these um, um, situations that customers they have to deal with this on a, on a daily basis. Mission critical customers like banks, as you said. Now, what we've been working on over the last few years is that we've been. Um, do you remember host integration servers, Scott? Oh my goodness, host integration server, I want to say 93, 94, we would use that to talk to all kinds of big iron. So, well, we still have host integration server, we support the product, we have it, the core version is host integration server 2020, but what we've been doing over the last five years is we've been introducing these core technologies of integration that uh, host integration server has to, uh, to logic apps. So now, the majority of the capabilities that you have in Azure Logic Apps, uh, in host integration server, they are now available in Logic Apps via Logic Apps connectors. There is a, there is there has been efforts to uh, uh, to support our customers in the mainframe modernization space. Um, there are different approaches for mainframe modernization. There is lift and shift, code conversion, um, uh, ex extension of capabilities, and, and rewriting uh, these. Uh, uh, mainframe systems. Uh, and on top of this, what there are other patterns, and we've been learning from customers that uh, customers are really pursuing or they are asking for help on managing the dependencies because it's not just about migrating the mainframe. It's not just about migrating the application, but what happens what is with what is left behind on premises, right? You still have to deal with those uh, systems or how is it that you interact with what you modernize to the cloud. So for those uh, scenarios is where we have uh, logic apps and host integration server, the host integration server capabilities that allow customers to continue using these legacy assets uh, in the in what is left from the mainframe or the dependencies from the mainframe that has been migrated to the cloud to um, to Azure. And 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 I think I think something that is worth mentioning is that if we see this from a cloud perspective, we have a, a workflow, a Logic Apps workflow, um, which um, which has a different type different types of connectors that allow integration with different types of systems uh, on premises in the cloud, making a hybrid uh, architecture. But uh, 
we also have all, all of these um, connectors, these legacy integration connectors, mainframe and mid-range integration connectors like IBM MQ, host files, uh, 3270 to interact with green screens, CICS systems, DB2 databases, IMS a transaction manager, and IMS uh, database, which is a hierarchical database. So if, if you see the world from a um, from a cloud perspective uh, and, and the enablement that brings the cloud and additional scenarios with software that allows to enable and empower all of these scenarios that today we have, like for instance, dealing with terminals or printers or ATMs. Every time that you go to an ATM, you are likely using a host integration server and to, to interact with a mainframe. Um, and also, the capabilities that uh, that you can gain if you continue modernizing these workloads with any of our partners. So then, Logic Apps becomes the uh, the the product for 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 hybrid integration for legacy systems like uh, mainframes and, and mid ranges. And and let right. me show you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, if I may, one thing I want to comment on is that with Azure Logic Apps, you know, you have these wonderful Lego blocks. And, you know, I like to think about it in the modern world, there's like blob storage and HTTP and you can go and do these things and you, you then start adding in other things like service bus and file systems, all of those pieces that uh, Azure provides are available to you in a workflow. Why shouldn't your big iron be available to you as well? I should be able to call a mainframe and put something in storage and make an HTTP call and they're all peers in that wonderful Logic Apps workflow. And it sounds like that's what you're making possible. Absolutely, absolutely. And on top of HTTP, you know, I think I think what sometimes is um, um, is a bit of a challenge to explain to 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 um, to to folks is that a mainframe is not only a server, right? A mainframe is really an ecosystem. You know, you host applications, you host data, you host messaging systems, right? So then, um, integrating with them, um, it's um, it, it's 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 an endeavor that you have to see holistically, right? From different angles and different protocols and different uh, uh, approaches and patterns and technologies. So let me show you a little bit of what we have today with uh, with uh, um, Azure Logic Apps and our mainframe and mid ranges connectors. Yeah, let's do it. Let me let me open the the portal. Okay, so in the portal. Uh, um, I go to my Logic App. I have a Logic App that is called Azure Friday here, right? One important uh, aspect to mention is that we will have to set up this uh, Logic App to 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 have the VNet integration capability enabled because you definitely want your name from uh, not to be exposed. So you you want to use a VNet, a virtual network, to uh, to, inter to interact with your mainframe, and then um, open the right ports and and. and to make sure that you have access to the right facilities in the mainframe. This workflow that I have here um, consolidates all of our connectors. It has all of the connectors that we have available for mainframe and mid range integration. We have, uh, let me, let me quickly zoom out. So this is a fairly simple workflow and uh, it has the ability to integrate with uh, using 3270 which is a protocol that was created to work with the screens, the green screens that you are very familiar with, right? Um, the DB2 connector that uses a TCP AP connectivity to get into a DB2 database, host files uh, offline connector, which is a connector that has a parser that of uh, binary files, uh, and we'll, we'll see how it works. We have a connector for IMS systems, IMS is from one of the oldest systems around. It was built for the Apollo mission back in 1966. You have the CICS connector for a system, system uh, the CICS system who, who was uh, born in 1968, and you have also an MQ connector. So then all of these connectors, they are available uh, with Logic Apps. So then now with Logic Apps, you can integrate all of these diff different types of systems um, from our workflow. And, and, and to be honest, I think, I think this is something that uh, the team has been working very hard and, and, and we are so happy with the outcome because in the end, it allows a true mission critical integration with these legacy systems. Uh, a couple of things to add before, before running this uh, short demo is that uh, for some of the connectors that you have um, that I just uh, presented, you have to create a definition that is based in what we call copybook uh, 
copybook files, uh, which are basically a representation of the COBOL programs that uh, represent the parameters of each one of the uh, of these legacy programs. Like for instance, for CICS, we require one. For IMS, we require another, another type, right? For a data structure, we require another um, another structure, which we have available. Uh, we, uh, in Visual Studio, we can create a mirror of this structure using uh, Visual Studio. Um, and uh, in a in a file that we call HIDX, Horse Integration Definition XML file, but basically represents, you know, your 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 binary file, your binary structure, your COBOL copybook in the um, in the mainframe. So then, once you have defined all of this, so then the other thing that you have to to have available is access to the system. So you, as I said, you have to enable the right protocols, and and you have to be able to. Um, to integrate with uh, with this system via the core protocols, either HTTP or SNA over IP, whatever is being used by uh, by, by your system. Uh, now, let me go back to the demo. Then, um, what uh, what is going to happen is that I'm going to upload a file, which is a binary file, uh, from uh, from my machine. Uh, I will browse for the file. This is a data set that I created that um, typically is generated by a, a in, in, in a mainframe, right? And then what is going to happen is that this workflow we read uh, the binary data of this file and we'll pass it to to some of these connectors and then it will trigger some of these activities in this workflow. If I go to overview uh, and then then I go to uh, uh, run history, we'll see that this workflow is running here. Then I'm going to hit the detail of the workflow to see how is it doing, and then and then we'll see something something very important here, right? So this has been completed. The call out to the IMS program took 0.2 seconds, um, and this is a call from the cloud. So it went to the it went from from the logic app to the mainframe. It did some ex data extraction. It executed uh, a method and it returned a value of 777.12. Right, which is what the, basically the outcome of the mainframe program. The same thing happened with the CICS system. I have another program that does the same. It returns the same amount. And, and also, I was able to send a queue to this MQ system that resides the mainframe, right? And I send the binary, and then I have the, the body, the response of this datagram that I was that I sent. And a couple of things to add is that. Uh, uh, the, the, the data that I sent was binary, and then it was successfully parsed by this parser. Right? You see the outcome here. You see that this is the data. And this is the data that I wanted to, to show you in here. Just, just give me one second. You'll see that, um, try to log on. It's so cool to see the terminal. I haven't thought about these in a long time, but they, the reminder that they're out there and that they're they're producing and holding such important data. Yes, it is. It is. It is. And and um, let me let me show you something real quick. It's just uh, um, it's just taking some time. So I'll. Um, I'll go to my data set, this one that I exported. And I'm going to browse it, right? And then you'll see that it has two records. So these two records that I have in the file as the two records that have been parsed. That data that you saw was binary data. And that binary data was uh, basically um, um, uh, parsed by this host files connector. And just to finish, so we are executing a, a, a DB2 query, and we are getting, um, this is a select from a table, DB2 on the same mainframe, and we are executing for 3270 a navigation plan, which is basically what we call um, um, a definition of a screen. It's a set of screens that, uh, that have a sequence, and for you to get to a particular result, you have to create a navigation plan that mimics all of the sequence of these screens using a tool that is called the 3270 tool or 3DT. With this tool, 
you are able to create a sequence of screens. And once you have to find the screens, then this navigation plan will take you to the path to get the actual results. And this is fantastic for robotic process automation scenarios. And that is what happened. So that's the reason why it took longer, because you have to do computation in the cloud and on the mainframe. And that's what I want to show you. Um, this is basically, you know, to summarize some of the capabilities that we have today in Logic Apps to integrate with these legacy systems. There's so many different connectors. There's so many ways to talk to so many different databases over so many different protocols. Like you said, it's really a on-ramp into an ecosystem. And what's so important about this and what I think we want people to understand is that once you get it into Logic Apps, once you get it into Azure, then you can join the other ecosystem, which is the Azure ecosystem, data lakes and data um, you know, logging, management, uh, analysis, all of that work once you can bring those two ecosystems together with Logic Apps and Integration Server as the bridge, you can really do some cool solutions very quickly. Exactly, exactly. You're spot on, Scott. And 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 the fact that this is the result of work that was uh, conducted by a team for the last 30 years, I think is even more one because this is not new technology, right? I mean, the work that we've done and that we have running on these mission critical customers for so long uh, speak speak because the customers, they are still using a process of integration, right? Very you know, cool. I, yeah, those core capabilities that have been around, that have been reliable and been used in a host integration server, now brought to Logic Apps. It's peanut butter and chocolate together, my two favorite things. Very cool. Thank you so much, Harold Campos, for showing me about this uh, this new stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Colt. Thank you, everyone. All right. I am learning all about Azure Logic Apps, bringing those cloud-native capabilities to integrate our mainframes and our mid-ranges today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it. Watch more Azure Friday.